The question always comes up whether to use Python 2 or Python 3. There are good arguments for each, but in some cases you might not have a choice. For example, you might be using a server at work where you don't have administrative rights, and you may be forced into using one version or the other. When possible, I like to write code that can run on either Python 2 or Python 3. Not only can I share my code with you, not knowing which version you're running, but I also won't have to worry about rewriting all my scripts at some point in the future. The most visible difference between Python 2 and 3 is print. Let's take a look. Here in Python 2, print is a statement. I do print space hello, I get hello back. If I do that in Python 3, I get different results. I get an error. It's telling me I'm missing parentheses in the call to print. That's because print is a function in Python 3. So I have to put parentheses around the argument I'm passing to print function. And there we get the results we expect. Now you might say to me, I can do the same thing in Python 2. I could put parentheses around my string. And yes, that's true to some extent. But what's actually happening here is we're telling print to print this tuple of a single object. And in Python, you really can't have a tuple of a single object. Python always converts it back to the object that's within the tuple. So if I just specify parentheses hello, like so, and I hit enter, you see Python just converted it back to a string. However, if I put two elements into a tuple, now it keeps it as a tuple. So now if I do print hello goodbye with two elements or two objects in my tuple, it now prints it as a tuple. This is not the behavior in Python 3. Since print is a function and functions use parentheses to accept arguments, the arguments are passed to the print function, and it prints the way you would expect. Print is one of the most common things we do in Python. And so we're going to need a solution that allows us to have consistent printing if we want our scripts to run in both Python 2 and Python 3. Lucky for us, the creators of Python came up with a clever solution. Starting in Python 2.6, we can import the future to make Python 2 behave like Python 3 for certain functions. One of those functions is the print function. How we do that is we say from dunder future import print function. Now, if I try to print hello goodbye, I get the output I expected. Interestingly, if I try to print as a statement, like we did in the beginning, now it doesn't accept it. Now we get a syntax error. If I import the future into Python 3, it simply ignores it. So another interesting issue with Python 2 is division. Anytime you divide two integers, you don't get the result you might expect. This does what's called floor division. Essentially, it's truncating the remainder. I expected to get 1.5 here, and I got 1. And the reason is, I'm using an integer, and I'm dividing by another integer. And Python thinks, okay, you probably want an integer back. And so it gives me an integer, which is 1. 1 1.5 is not an integer, it's a float. So, how do you get around that? Well, you could, for example, make one of these a float instead of an integer. Then you'd get the correct results. Python 3 handles this differently. If I do 3 slash 2, I get a float back which is what you'd expect. So how do we get Python 2 to act like Python 3? Again, we can import from the future, from Dunder Future, import division. Now if I do 3 slash 2, I get the result I expected. Now there are times where it's convenient to truncate the decimal portion. Sometimes you do want just an integer back. And so we can do that 
by putting a double slash. And that works in both versions. So when we start writing our scripts, we're going to want to have this line in the beginning. From Dunder Future, import absolute import, division, and print function. Okay, so I'd like to cover one last thing about compatibility, and that's the input function. If I want to get input from a user, and let's say I want to assign that input to uh, variable x, I can prompt a user and say, uh, type something, and it gives the user a prompt, at which point I can type something, like hello, and we get an error. We're getting specifically a name error. It's saying the name hello is not defined. That's kind of a strange behavior. And what it's really saying is that Python doesn't have any object named hello. So if I create an object named hello, let's make it equal to 55, and I run this command again, and type hello. I don't get the error now, because I've defined hello. And if we look at x, x is equal to 55, which is what we set hello to. It turns out this is not useful. So the raw input function was created to fix this issue. And with raw input, now when I type something, I check the value of x, it's been assigned to what I type. This is typically what you want to do. So much so that in Python 3, if we do the same thing, input, type something, we get exactly the behavior we would expect. In fact, in Python 3, there is no longer a raw input. It is made input do what raw input does, basically what input was supposed to do in the first place. But there's a dilemma. How do we write a script that will run in either Python 2 or 3 consistently using the same commands? And you might think, hey, we'll import the future. Well, unfortunately, creators did not bless us with a future import of the input function in Python 2. So we're left to roll our own here. So here's my solution. I'm going to leverage the fact that raw input creates a name error in Python 3. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to say try raw input. And then I'm going to catch the exception. Accept name error. So this way, if we have an exception, It will instead use the input function. And you see it works. And now this code should work in Python 2 also. So what I'm going to do is wrap this up into a function. I'm going to call this get input. I'm going to uh, expect a prompt, but if the user does not give a prompt, I'll set it to uh, an empty string, which is essentially the behavior of the input and raw input functions. And then I'm going to say uh, line, make this a little neater. And uh, we're going to use our prompt here. And finally, we want to return line. Now let's paste this in. Python 2. Paste it into Python 3. And let's try it x equals get input type. Did it work? 
Okay, looks like it worked on Python 3. And it works on Python 2 also.